splendid night at the Oasis. Very nice. An email is flooded in from, um, I'm not sure where this is. It's from the primary seven class of St. Joseph's Primary School, and the name of the place is M-E-I-G-H. And I hold my hands up and say, I don't know where it is. And I'm even frightened to pronounce it. So somebody tell me quickly, please. You've got about a minute. Anyway, they say, well, they're listening to the show, even though they're at school, and hoping you'll play something festive. We're very tired this week, because on Wednesday and Thursday last week, we did our school play. It was Jack and the Beanstalk. And Mr. Patterson, our teacher, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Patterson, sorry about that, teach. Stop laughing, you lot, and sit down. She's letting us clown around. We're having a party this afternoon, and we finish school tomorrow. So thanks to all the people who came to our play, it was great. Happy Christmas to everybody. That's about it. I'm away to ponder upon things like, what do they have for their Christmas dinner in Turkey? Mike. Ah, thanks. Somebody told me it's pronounced Mike, and it's in Tandy for Mama. A happy Christmas to the folk there, especially the P7 class in St. Joseph. In Strasbourg, do they have euros in their plum pudding? And finally, I leave you with this thought. If you ever actually, think about it, find a plum in your plum pudding. No, neither have I. Back again tomorrow, we're having a Christmas Eve party on Friday. Jerry Anderson next. So from the wee gang and from me until then, bye-bye. Gentlemen, this is Jerry Anderson here. It's coming up to 29. No, it's not. I can't say that. It's 29 minutes to 11 o'clock on this fine Tuesday morning. It's getting near Christmas. I'm feeling very excited. The goose are getting fat. Or whatever. The number to ring if you want to contact this program, and there are many reasons why you should want to. Least of all, because maybe you're lonely. 0645 555 A cheery word, a quip on our lips, and a smile for everyone, even the most lowly and the most unemployed. That's what we're here for. Bring me southern kisses from your room. Meet me in the middle of the night. Let me hear you say everything's all right. Let me smell the moon in your perfume. Oh, gods and years will rise and fall. There's always something more. Lost in talk, I will waste my time. And it's all been said before. Everything's okay. Come on out beneath the shining sun. Meet me in the middle of the night. Let me hear you say everything's all right. Sneak on out beneath the stars and run.
That's Steve Forbert. That's a song called uh, Romeo's Tune from an album called Jack Rabbit Slim, which would be a great addition to your Christmas stocking. If it did, you could get it, which you probably can't. It's coming up to 25 minutes to uh, 11 o'clock. I'd like to thank all the people who sent me Christmas cards, people too numerous to mention. I've got a whole batch of them here. Maybe I should go through them and just lift every once in a while. Every once in a while. Uh, Alex Slatter, Slater of the Fisherman's Mission. And uh, Rosaline uh, Miles sends me a photograph of a, of a naked man wearing a pair of Santa Claus boots and indeed a red hat. Thank you very much, Rosaline. Maybe perhaps you should have kept that yourself. But it's very nice. Thank you. I, I appreciate the thought, even though it may be. And uh, I'd like to thank all those other people. Uh, the Mary Devlin. Uh, I'm just picking these out at random here. Thank you very much. You see, normally what we would do in a case like this, we'd put them all up and arrange them on a kind of a string, but uh, we're hardly ever here, so we just don't do that. We just put them in the pile in the corner every once in a while to just look through them and feel good about it. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, everybody. I just took out another one here at random. What? Heather what? wants you on one. You're very bright in there. Okay. I can see the well, two of you. That's all. Surely, I. Surely, I. Yeah. You've got a new number and you can't remember it. Okay. That's all right. Okay, yeah. Hello, good. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello? Did you say Shirley? Heather's on one. No, there's nobody there. Hello, good morning. Hello, is that Shirley? No, it's not. Of course it's not. No, it's not. No, there's nobody there at all. There's nobody there at all. Sorry one, about two, that. three, okay. two, right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. you. Say hello to Mabel. Thank, thank you, Jerry, for the prize on your rickety wheel, which was of a fantastic bike to the value of 200 pounds. It was a great surprise. Listening to your program every day, it is great. So have a happy Christmas, you and your family, and look forward to listening to you in the year 2000. Thanks again, Mabel. Uh, Mabel Bailey, though, kill, kill, another satisfied customer on the rickety wheel. And indeed, there are many of those. There are a few of the other kind, but we try and ignore those. But it's still in all, we try to cater for them, because after all, they are human beings too. Well, some of them. I have to say hello to a lady who writes me a very long request list. Please play the beautiful song, Holy Night, wishing our family a happy Christmas and a blessed and holy New Year 2000. Their names are Philomena Mullen, Paul and Mary Sheeran and family, Richard and Paul, Damien and Philip and Andrew, Lisa and Kieran Roddy and family, Fiona, Emma, Joseph, Jack, Paul and Anne Mullen and family, Stephen, Amy Ryan, Alan and his daughter Therese McMenamin, Christine Mullen in Wembley, uh, Peter Mullen and Ghislaine, I think that's pronounced that way, in Scotland from Mum and Dad, Mary and Paul Mullen, to grandchildren and family, many thanks, Jerry. Wishing you a happy Christmas and New Year 2000. Please try for a holy night. We'll play that later on. What a number of requests on that. Here's an unusual uh, Christmas song. I thought I'd play this. It's uh, not the sort of thing you hear every day. We don't believe in you-know-who, but we don't let the kids know it. We're parents. We're grown-ups. There's a line we have to tow it. But we're part of a conspiracy about this bearded, big, fat guy who isn't real, who never lived, who's old but doesn't die. We went to the department store. We climbed out on that limb, told the kids that it was you-know-who. We said that bum was him. Then we placed them on his knee. To me, the knee seemed rather bony. Happily, they sat there, though, chatting with that phony. Told the kids we could provide the proof. (sighs) The deceit. How I hate it. We put out the milk and cookies. Yes, I admit, I drank and ate it. Then that fib about the North Pole. As if any elves could live there. We helped to write and send that letter, knowing full well it went nowhere. You know who comes down the chimney. How could such a fat man fit? The whole thing is preposterous, yet we get children to buy it. We have no shame. The lies pile up. You'd think at least we'd balk when we sing of red-nosed reindeer and snowmen who dance and talk. Well, it's just a harmless story of fairy tales and Christmas fun. Not unlike that other theory. The one about God's son. Where angels talk to shepherds, wise men troop after a star, and a virgin has a baby. (laughs) Boy, that's fetched pretty far. But we adults buy that conspiracy. We tow and swallow that old line. Disappearing milk and cookies? What about that bread and wine? It's enough to make you hesitate. 
It's enough to give you pause. Perhaps it's just as crucial. Kids believe in you know who. That's Claude and Wainwright the third, an unusual dissection of the phenomenon that we know as Christmas. Hello, good morning. What is, what is going on here? What? You keep saying there's people here and there's nobody here at all. Heather's there. Where? She should be on one. She's not. She is. She wasn't there the last time either. Hello, Heather. But there's nobody there at all. Have you got your button pressed? <laughs> yes. I With have, your wee red thing. I have my button pressed, yes. Everything is okay as far as I'm concerned. There's what about only... your screen? What about it? Is it, is it is, is your screen sorted out? Is Hold it through minute. in your screens? Hold on a minute. I'm just doing that now. Why do I have to do this kind of thing? Because there's there was someone in before you. You had a hot seat. Hello? Hello? Oh. <laughs> sorry about that. Mabel, is it? No, Heather. Heather. I said to you, Heather. Hello? Heather, sorry I hadn't pressed my screen. I heard you saying that. Why do I have to do this? <laughs> because why can't somebody else do it? I don't know anything about all these screens that you press. Somebody all right, to... well, say that. I thought you meant to speak to me. Anyway. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, there's certain technical things you have to do in the morning here, but usually a man comes in and does them. And right. sometimes when he doesn't come in, if he's drinking the night before, I have to come in here, and I don't know he hasn't been in, and people say, press all those things, and I don't know what to press. No, well, that's true. You've more things to do than press buttons, haven't you? I only got here five minutes ago. What, I know what to press, but I, I, know. Pressed, the, I, I pressed the right thing as far as you're concerned. Good, I, I, good. I, I know how to press your button. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what can well, we do for you this morning? Miss Jerry, have you ever heard of a balalaika? I have indeed, yes. It's a well-known musical instrument played by people in Dublin. Yes. Well, would you have any idea of where I could get a CD of somebody playing a balalaika? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Donald Lunny is a man who plays a balalaika all the time. Have you heard of Donald Lunny? No, I haven't. Donald Lunny is one of those men who has been labouring in the vineyard in Dublin for many, many years. Right. Trying to bring forward the frontiers of broadcasting and indeed contemporary music, folk, Irish, etc., Hungarian, but what have you. Right. And he's a great uh, champion of the balalaika and plays it uh, on a regular basis. Um, I would yeah. imagine someone out there would be able to steer you in the direction of something that uh, Donald Lunny has recorded, which would, would indeed include exclusive. Playing of the ball. You nearly got your tongue round up. <laughs> it wasn't easy for me there. I'm not myself yet, you know. Donal Lun Lunny. Donal Lunny. D O N A L. Yes, I can spell. I know, I'm just right. trying to help. Don't be cheeky. L U W N Y. Donal yes. Lunny. Keep an eye out for him. Right, I've tried all the record shops and uh, Caroline uh, and HMV and all the ones in Belfast and none of them seem to know what a balalaika is. Of course they wouldn't. Why would they know a thing like that? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. And then you said I shouldn't have any difficulty getting one. Shouldn't be any trouble at all as long as you know what you're looking for. Well, what would be the best shop in Belfast to get one? I would say one of the music shops. Uh... <laughs> what would it <laughs> Go into Terry Hooley in Good Vibrations. He'll help you. Good Vibrations. Yeah, he'll right. help you, he'll help you. And failing that, go to Golden Discs or somewhere. Mm. Right, Jerry. Ricky. Pardon? I said, right, Jerry. Sorry, it's, it's not you, I'm, 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 I'm being... Right, uh, sorry, I'm, what's that you should... Uh, what do you say? Uh, there's a man here giving me information about the balalaika. It's a, what, a Greek? A Russian, that's a Russian instrument. And, and Donald only plays the bazooki, which is a Greek instrument. Well, it looks the same to me. Yeah, well, that's, well, okay, well, now you know. Well, there's a bazooka different right. entirely to a balalaika it's, then. Yes, entirely different, this man's telling me. All oh, oh, right. Tell the man his own well, business. Well, ask, get ask that tell man her? where I would get a record yeah, of some you, 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 Would you talk to this lady? Right, hold on, please. Hold right. On. Why doesn't he mind his own business? Is that him there now? Is that him there now? Hold on a minute. Is he on two? This is he. Good morning. Why Hello. don't you mind your own business? Oh, sorry, Jay. <laughs> it's just you keep giving people misinformation, so it's only fair that somebody should keep them correct. <laughs> Well, you see. A bazooki is a Greek instrument that has eight strings, four doubles, uh, in octaves. The uh, balalaika is a Russian instrument that has six strings, which is three and three and three octaves. So the, right. dog, the dogs in the street know that. Everybody knows that. <laughs> All right. Except you. <laughs> well, I may have mistaken you don't a balalaika. Don't know plays the bazooki. Well, yeah. well, maybe he does. Uh, they look the same anyway, don't they? They're all the same. Well, <laughs> no, Jerry no, no, sounded I... so uh, expert in his uh, yeah. advice there that I was believing him. Yeah, he has a green waffle. This, this is what you need to watch in this program, you see. I think I'm right all the time. <laughs> Although many of the time I'm not. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought I was right that time. I wouldn't deliberately give you a bum steer. No, I know you wouldn't. But if he had kept his nab out of it, you would have... <laughs> I'd have believed you. You'd have believed me. <laughs> 
Okay, then. So Donald Lonnie plays the bazooki. Correct. So where would a man, a woman, indeed, for that matter, Thank find... Thank you very much, Jerry. <laughs> where, would a, where would a woman find a man playing a balalaika? Moscow. Oh, <laughs> Well, would a woman not wander around the uh, world music section of some of the larger oh, stores and find maybe some Mongolian nose flute? <laughs> or, or, or indeed some fuzzy-headed person playing the uh, balalaika? Would she not find that? Uh, maybe difficult, you know. Anyway, let me ask her, Henry, what do you want the balalaika playing for, Henry? What do you want that for, anyway? It's for my cousin for Christmas, and she's deaf. She, she would really love a, a CD of somebody play, playing balalaika. Well, what's wrong with her? I mean, what kind of... There's what? nothing wrong with her at all, and I'll tell her what you said, but and she'll phone you. But um, maybe, I would just like to get check. it as a, a surprise for her for Christmas. All right, then. Maybe yeah. you better check in case your niece wants a bazooka. My cousin. Your cousin? Yeah, no, it's a balalaika. Right. Well, I don't know what to say to you except to say, you know, good luck to you. Thank and, you, uh, Jerry. I think you you have a little more information now than you had before. Yes, I have, but I still don't know where to go to get it. There's someone else coming on here to stick there now, Ben. Oh, for goodness sake. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. What seems to be the trouble? Well, it's about the balalaika. What about it? She's looking for someone to play the balalaika. Well, not exactly. She's looking for a record of someone playing the balalaika. Do you play well, it yourself? If she gets the soundtrack of Dr. Zhivago, there's actually three tracks on it featuring the balalaika. Oh, well, now, we're, now we're getting somewhere. Right. You got that? Uh, yes, the theme from Dr. Zhivago, yes. You'll, you'll get that in Virgin in the film's theme section. <laughs> Dr. Zhivago. Film. In the theme film theme section, section. right? Uh -huh. Soundtrack, yeah, you'll get that in there. Right. But it's not, there's no CD actually that he knows of, of solely Balalaika. No, it's not, no, no, I don't think so. Right. Well, would that it. not be good enough for her? I mean, would that not keep her at home? I would have to there? keep her going until, unless I could maybe get tickets to Russia to go and look for one over there. All right then. Well, maybe someone. Uh, maybe I'll go someone. To Russia, I'd... I'll go to Russia, Jerry. Somebody's away on this. Hold yeah, on, uh... I'll go to Russia, Jerry. Okay. Right, I'll get my big boots and my hat on and go to Russia. Yeah, it's the only thing I suggest. I think do that's the only thing I'm going to be able to do. <laughs> but we've enough to keep you going there. Oh, yes, that's great, Jerry. Get out but... there and shop. Right, well, listen, have a nice Christmas, Jerry. Thank you. And don't drink too much. I won't, no. No. <laughs> yes, there's another man away, and is the conductor. Right, they're all, they're all disgusted. Okay. <laughs> I want to mention the drink. <laughs> Hold on a minute. There's more information for you here. Oh, what? Jerry, we'll be on all morning. What? What? Would you tell her? No, there's a call on line too, but if she, uh, somebody else said if she gets the soundtrack from Dr. Chivago. We know that. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Well, I why don't you listen then? Ask them whether they're listening to the radio at all. Hello, good morning. Good morning. There's another person there. Hello, other person. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Have what? we got a whole lot on this morning? Oh, there's about five on the line, I think, at the moment. <laughs> Why do you th stick your nab in there? Go on, what is Are it? Are you on about a balalaika? Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, go ahead. Tell us what you've got to know about it. Right. If you listen, uh, the, there is an orchestra called the Russian Balalaika Orchestra. Now we're getting it? somewhere. Yeah. Yes. And That's they brilliant. actually played in the Opera House in the 1980s. My goodness. So there you are. They were brilliant. So if you get that, you're on a winner. The what Russian, do you call it? What, sorry, what was the full name? I think it's Balalaika. That's balalaika right. Orchestra. The Russian Balalaika right. Orchestra. Yeah. Right. That's well, great. I would keep an eye out for that one. Go to any of the classical stores. Yes, and I'll, ask I'll maybe ring up and see if they can get it for me. I'll ring um, the gramophone shop. They have a good classical you know, section. They would know, yeah. Right, Jerry. That's good stuff there, then. And thank that lady very much. Is she still there? She's still yes. there, yes. What's your thanks, name, love? Thank you very much. <laughs> McConnell. McConnell, Mrs. McConnell, McConnell. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Good luck to you, oh, wonderful one. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Oh, Bye. Happy Christmas, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Happy Jerry. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Yes, yeah, same to you, and thank you. Bye. 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 It's getting harder, this job, you know. Wilson saw it coming. Come on, you know he did. Why else did he take off the running? Why else would he still be here? Where else would he go these days? There's only one place left. He's up in the old sage. I bet he's scared to death. Now I know you know Wilson, but you don't know him like I do. And if you think he'll come easy, well I guess that's up to you. But I think you got your hands full. You're in over your head. I 
That's a nice little song, that. Uh, people have been asking me about that. That's from an album called Live Down Here on Earth by Kevin Welsh. That's a song called Wilson's Tracks. I was going to play a Christmas song, and I opened the CD, and there's no CD in it. There goes the Christmas medley, I'll tell you. Uh, here's one here. I'll play this one. I've been asked to play this one as well. It's a song by Lady Smith Black Mambazo featuring Des Ray, who is not the person you think they are. it is. It's a song called Ain't No Sunshine. <clears throat> Have you got all your shopping done? Listen. What? Could you, sorry, could you yes. get a couple of games? What? Uh, there's a game called, we think it's Pokemon, P-O-K-E, Pokemon. Would that be right? I Would think you... you might find it's called Pokemon. Well, we don't know. I don't know. I know. It's Pokemon. Japanese. Pokemon. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. It's, not, it's a, a new sensation. Right. That's why it's, you've, you've never heard of it. It's I... sweeping the land. No, what is it? It's a game called Pokemon. Well, a man phoned in to say that he's been trying everywhere to get and he spelt it for me, P-O-K-E-M-A-N. So he's been trying to get it. Okay. He's in the Belfast it, area. He probably calls it Pokemon. Yeah. So that's why he can't get it. It's Pokemon. Right. P-O-K-E-M-O-N. Um, can you get in the northwest area, Derry, northwest area, where can you get the millionaire game? Who wants to be a millionaire? You know that. Tell him not to be buying that. Stop it. And a lady from Belfast wants a game called Rat Race. Yes. Well, can you help? I can't help, no. Rat Race, Pokemon, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, yeah. Uh, those seems to be the kind of stuff, seems to be the kind of oh, stuff. Oh, I, and, uh, the, uh, a uh, poster for, um, what do you call that man? That, that man, Jared Janet, I was telling you about. What do you call him? Uh, Claude Van Damme. What do you call him? Jean Claude Van Damme, whatever you call him. Boy, it does the... You know, you know hardly anything. I know hardly nothing. You know hardly anything about your popular culture. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, you know, that is not a bad thing, though, although I do wish that you, you knew... Well, can you get that poster of that man in the... Uh, uh, this is wanted in the Belfast area. Jean Claude Van Damme. Is that right? I don't know. Well, that's four things you have to do this morning on the program. Oh, there's a man wants you to... There's a man also wants me, to, with your permission, to ring Geordie and ask Geordie a question. I want to talk to Geordie as well. Is Do you think right? it's possible to talk to him? Right, I'll ring him after the news. I have to talk to him. There's a call for you now on one. Yeah, okay. I want to talk to Geordie. I'm glad you brought that up. Right. It's important that I talk to okay. him. Okay. Because right. there's a woman under the illusion that she's won the ferret and the two ducks as well. Right. Okay. This is Betsy, wants you? Betsy. Hello? Yes, good morning, Betsy. This is Betsy Robinson at one on your curriculum wheel. 
Yes. One of your very happy rickety wheeled winners. I'm glad to hear that. What, what was you? So I have got a letter from Terry Brown, the old school house in yes. Cumber County Down. Listen this now. The bridal suite at the old school house in for two deserving people. Mm-hmm. Shopper driven from your home. I think you'll find that. Dinner, yeah. champagne, flowers and chocolate. And chauffeur driven home again. Chauffeur driven home again? Yes. So a chauffeur's going to come and pick you up? Oh, yes, indeed. Bring you down there? Yes. Shower you with chocolates and champagne? Yes. Feed you like a pig? Uh, feed me like a pig. Put you upstairs <laughs> in the bridal suite? And on the bridal suite. Leave you alone with the I'm, TV? I'm two old dears that were 70. <laughs> <laughs> what a night we'll have. What? <laughs> and then you need to watch. Do you know the worst thing about the bridal suite? <laughs> There's a hole in the middle of the bed. Oh, there's not. Every bridal suite ever went. Do you oh. know what? I've talked about this before, and it's very true, you see, because <laughs> if you have a certain amount of notoriety in Northern Ireland, yeah. you see, if people think that they kind of half know you, <laughs> and you're traveling around a bit, you know, and you find yes. yourself checking into hotels, not necessarily in, you know, in the middle of the summer. Yes. But supposing I go the summer like, uh, let's see, uh, I'm just, uh, Cookstown, say it, random, right. picking a place at random. Right. If I said to myself, I must go down to Cookstown, I have something to do down there. Yes. And I'll stay in the hotel there. Maybe I'll pick a hotel down there and I'll stay there. Not a swanky hotel because I wouldn't stay in a swanky hotel. <laughs> but they always put you in the bridal suite. Yes. Because they say, oh, this man's from the BBC. We better make a good impression. We put him in the bridal suite. And I hate the bridal suite. Do you know why? Why? I have to warn you about a number of things. Oh, there. <laughs> First of all, there's a hole in the middle of the bed. Oh, dear. Do you know what I mean? They're all slumped down into the middle of it. <laughs> And the second one is when you go into the toilet, know all the toilet holders and all the toilet paper. Yeah. There are all wee bows in them. <laughs> and you have to, you know, if you're sitting there, you know what I mean? Do you know the way you need a piece of toilet paper in a hurry? Yes, I do. <laughs> well, you see, you need to be careful when you go in there to, to, to loose the wee bow first. First. Well, I don't know anything about that. Because you don't want to be footing with those. Never been on the <laughs> Well, I, I think you're ready then. I'm ready. To so be ready for the bow. And another thing, too, that I don't like about them, the TV's too far away. Is it? Because they're not used to people looking at TV. You're not used to bed up, no. No, but you see, the TV's away in the corner. Oh. And I'd be lying in the bed saying, Jesus, I can't see that TV, boys. <laughs> and then you suddenly realize that nobody else looks at it. Nobody else looks at it. And then you have to go out, and then you have to pull it out from the wall, and then you discover there's only a short lead on it. <laughs> and then if you start and trail the four-poster bed, there's probably a four-poster bed you're in, too. Oh. And you need to be very careful about the four-poster bed, because you know when you get up in the middle of the night to go to the pole there? Yes. You have to be careful not to knock your head on one of the one of the posters, well, because you're not used to it. You really you know want the, me to go to that thing, uh, yeah. Do you know the way you get out of bed there in the morning, you just lunge forward? You're not used to things being in front of you. Well, the I, old poster, you need to be very careful. You crack your head very quick. Well, well I'll, I'll remember all you told me. Well, when do you, when do you think you might go? Well, uh, we're not going to go at Christmas. We're going to go maybe sometime in the new year. Everybody's busy Christmas time, so family-wise, you know, so... But I'm really, really delighted. I never want else in my life. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy it. So I'll let you know when I come back again. <clears throat> it's a very nice. Was. It's a very nice place, that. I well, I've never been up that way. You know, we're kind of um, crowd. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, why don't you? I mean, I'm sure the person wouldn't mind if you waited until the weather got a wee bit no, better. No, we've already been in touch with him. You oh, know, a nice you? man. I'm telling him yesterday and says that would be fine. Just whenever we're ready, just give him a ring. Oh, that'd be fantastic. So. And thank you very, very much, Jerry. It's Not at all. Very, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you a very happy Christmas for and us. And a Merry Christmas to you and your family and your staff you have there. Thank you very uh, much. I will listen to you every, every morning. That's good. Okay, dear. You're bringing the old fella with you, then? Oh, I Well, when I read it at first, you know, and he says, oh, that's great, that's it. we're going. I says, I have never mentioned you yet. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I've stuck with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. All right, then. All right. Thank you again. Okay, bye -bye. thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See, that's good, you see. Nice to know that there are people out there happy. There are other people who's not so happy. Have we had any more negative feedback about some of the prizes on the uh, rickety wheel? I, I hate to spin this out a bit, you know, but I mean, after all, I didn't... Pardon the pun. Uh -huh. I didn't miss... I missed a week through illness. This should have been all being cleared up last week, and I'm surprised you haven't cleared it up. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to handle the the old RW last week at all. It's only the one I difficulty we have now at the moment, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Just the one difficulty concerning <laughs> yeah. the, ma the man about yeah. the yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, I can't understand why people are so upset. I do admit that a bottle of Millennium Bush whiskey did disappear. Yeah. But I I'm buying it with only my one, own yes, yes with my own money. That's right. 
You know, and people have never seen and that before. We talked before. to the man yesterday, and he's quite happy. And he's quite. Why should everybody else be unhappy about That's it? Right. Every, uh, all's well that ends well. I wish they weren't so miserable. Anyway, we'll be back after the news at approximately four minutes past eleven. Don't switch over because there's nothing on anywhere else. BBC Radio Ulster News at 11 o'clock. This is Darren Vaughan. The former deputy headmaster, Sean Jenkins, has failed to have his conviction for the murder of his foster daughter, Billy Jo, quashed. The Court of Appeal in London upheld a jury's verdict that he battered the 13-year-old to death with a metal tent peg at the family home in Hastings in East Sussex. From the court, Danny Shaw reports. Sean Jenkins, sitting in the dock, showed no emotion as the judges announced their decision. He immediately left the courtroom. During the nine-day hearing, Jenkins contested the key prosecution evidence that tiny blood spots on his clothes proved he was the killer. A scientist, called by the defence, said the droplets could have come from Billy Joe breathing out as she lay dying. But the three judges said, though relevant and credible, the fresh evidence added so little to the weight of the defence case compared with the prosecution's that any doubt would not be reasonable. The defence barrister, Anthony Scrivener QC, asked the court for leave to appeal on a matter of law to the House of Lords. A ruling on that matter will be given in the new year. Sinn Féin President Jerry Adams has welcomed the fact that the government is to change the law to allow politicians from Northern Ireland to become members of both the Dáil and the Commons. The bill, which will usher in the changes, is due to be published later today and introduced in the new year. Mr Adams described it as a significant move. The breakthrough is, a, is, a, is a, in getting a situation where Northern representatives can take seats in Southern institutions, and that's over to the Southern government, to the Irish government in Dublin, or at least not to the government so much at this stage, as to the Oireachtas Committee to come in with, I would like to think, uh, would be positive and progressive uh, findings which would allow that to happen. The Ulster Unionist MP Geoffrey Donaldson says it wouldn't be practical to have public representatives sitting in a parliament both here and in the Republic. But the SDLP Assembly member Alex Atwood says the change is part of the evolving political relationships between the UK and the Republic. I think that most people uh, will see this uh, development as a sign of the maturity uh, between the peoples of these islands, that there is a special relationship between the people of Britain and Ireland and that therefore there are to be, like uh, in the British Commonwealth, special provisions. Restoration works begun this morning in one of Belfast's best-known landmarks, the Albert Clock. Two million pounds will be spent in the work, which includes stabilising the clock's slant, repairing the stonework and restoring the tower. The clock face, as well as many of the internal workings, will also be repaired. A city watchdog has said it won't mount an investigation into the alleged mis-selling of endowment mortgages. The moves disappointed campaigners who claim they were misled. Karen Hogan reports. The Financial Services Authority has decided not to investigate endowment mortgages because it says most people with endowments feel they have a good product which is often performed better than a simple repayment mortgage. The move has been welcomed by the mortgage industry which wanted to avoid a situation like the pensions mis-selling scandal which cost millions of pounds in compensation. Campaigners had demanded an investigation because they said endowments had been wrongly sold and were too inflexible and expensive early on in the life of the mortgage. Bad publicity about endowments has already damaged their popularity and sales have fallen sharply over the last decade. Well now an update on the travel front with Emma Dunseith. At the International Airport, the British Airways flight from Heathrow due at half past nine has been further delayed, now landing at ten past twelve. The British Midland flight from Heathrow due at half past twelve now land at t five to one, and the Gill Airways flight from Teesside due at twenty past eleven has been cancelled. For the latest information, contact the airport on 01849 422888. There are also a number of delays at Belfast City Airport. If you're collecting passengers of flights from Glasgow, Leeds, Bradford or Birmingham, give the airport a call on 457745. And the weather, a mainly dry day with some sunshine, temperatures up to 8 degrees. Well, that's it for now. Join us again at midday. It's high time you went for a stroll, isn't it? Christmas food and no exercise? Tut, tut. So, right, switch on the radio, please, at five minutes past noon on Monday. BBC Radio Ulster, of course. Then get yourself a comfy seat. Yes, that's right. I said seat. And join me, Adam Coates, your guide on a stroll down memory lane for our 1999 Sports Review of the Year. Now, that won't be too strenuous, will it? 
And bring a mince pie or two and a slice of cake to munch along the way. So see you, five past twelve, Monday. Yeah, we'll be there. It's five minutes past eleven o'clock. This is Jerry Alderson here. Incidentally, on Christmas Day, we've got a program on at 11.30 in the morning, between 11.30 and uh, 1 o'clock. It's a collection of, uh, well, bits of nonsense, actually, that we've uh, exposed you to over the course of the past 12 months. So so it's Christmas morning, 11.30 to uh, 1 o'clock. No particular title. This program that you're listening to at the moment will be on until 12 o'clock. You'll be listening to BBC Radio Ulster and to BBC Radio 4, if you're not uh, otherwise indisposed. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 0645 555 678. That's 0645 555 678. May as well get the plugs in while they're at it. You gotta get it. Mm-hmm. You gotta get it. Don't forget those go around again. You gotta get it. You gotta get it and you gotta get it good Once I had a little Spanish guitar My neighbors told me I could go pretty far Well, I came and I went And my guitar got the best But I discovered that the people who love Are what we need to do to get up above it all And that's that Unless the world is flat I want to get it, mm-hmm. I want to get it just in case it doesn't come around again. I want to get it, mm-hmm. I want to get it and I want to get it good. Pardon me if I've been misunderstood. I want to get it while the going is good. Telephone ring about a song I sang. The life of Carol Black and Ultra for sure is automatic for the lady to do. She came and she went without a single den. You gotta get it. Old Boys Network, that's uh, uh, Paul McCartney and uh, what do you call the other fella? Hmm? What's his name? Carl Perkins. I can't hear you. Can you not? Good. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, who's that? It's Andre. Sorry? It's Andre Brown. I know where to get Pokemon. Um, who wants to be a millionaire? Right, maybe you should share your knowledge. Where, where would a man get Pokemon? A man would get Pokemon in over the internet. Would he? At a website called Toy Zone or Wizard Interactive. And there's also phone numbers. Yeah. Uh, Toy Zone's phone number is 0845 yeah. 688613. You seem to know an awful lot. And Wizard's phone number? Yes. Is 01765 01765 6766. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. So Toy Zone is uh, 0845 Yep. And Wizard is 0176567 Yep. Right. So if a man phoned these numbers, would a man get Pokemon and would a man get who wants to be a millionaire? Do you think a man would get that in time for Christmas? Uh, yeah, you can get next day delivery. Is that a fact? Well, that sounds good. So, in other words, you don't have to go into the Internet at all. You just use those numbers. Yep. Well, this is all very useful. How did you come upon this information? Through your magazine. Yeah. You sound like a very bright boy. Uh, what kind of an age of a chap are you, roughly? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Eleven. Eleven. Twelve-ish. Twelve-ish. 
In other words, you're coming up to 12. Mm -hmm. No, I am 12. You're, you're, you are 12. Yeah. In other words, you're 12. Yeah. You're, you're not 11 at all. You're 12. Yeah. And how, how long have you been on the net? You've been on the net for a while. Yeah. Have you? Well, how do you find it there? I mean, do you find that uh, your your brain is being stimulated and helped and you obviously think this is the wave of the future? What do you suggest to other people like, you know, I mean, I, I'm fairly computer literate, but there are people out there in their 40s who don't know anything about computers. Do you think they're being left behind? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of a world do you think you'll grow up to live in? When you're about 21, do you think things will be terribly different than the way they are now? Yeah. In what way? Can you think of what might be different? I hate to put you on the spot like this, but it's important that I try and pick your brains. I think everyone will have computers and your money will be on your computer. Just and downloaded on the computer. And there'll be no such thing. Do you know the way when you go out drinking there at night, and I'm not assuming that you do that? No, your father probably. I, does your father take a wee drink at all? Does he? Uh, now so, and again. Now and again. Well, he'll know what I'm talking about. Sometimes when your father gets up in the morning and says things about his head. Uh, and, hangover? Yeah, and he's looking for Andrew's liver salts, and, and he's saying things like, where's that bloody resolve? That kind of thing. And then suddenly, when he's walking along, you realize that the left-hand pocket of his trousers is very heavy. And he reaches in, and he pulls out about 15-pound coins and about 25 10p pieces and uh, about 88 20p pieces and any number of small 2ps and 1ps. You'll realize that that man has been drinking the night before. Yeah. So the point is that maybe this thing won't happen anymore because the man won't have a pocket full of change. He'll be able to do all his drinking over the internet. His money will be in his computer. And he'll have to have a special tap on the side of the computer. Just put his, just kind of put his head down, won't he? No, no. You, you, you go to your computer and you stick in your computer. And it takes the money off your computer or yeah, their computer. But who's going to give him the drink? The bartender? Say, no, Don't but be who, bartenders. But how's, what's he going to give the bartender in exchange for the drink? The money on his computer. The money that he will take out of his computer? Yeah. It seems complicated, you know, somehow. And how else do you think life is going to change? I mean, do you think you'll get more air when you're older? Do you know the way you see young, foolish chaps going out playing football and running around tracks and doing that, just the pole vault and things like that? Do you think all that will stop? No. People will still go out there and do things that will make them healthy? Yeah. Even though there's no reason to go out at all? even though everything is at your fingertips and everything that you want and desire is at the keyboard of your computer, people will still go out. Yeah, definitely. Well, I would like to think there's a brave new world out there. I would like to think that people would have anything, everything, within their reach, but at the same time would not forget that they're human beings breathing real air. I mean, you'll still go out and walk along the countryside and stroke a horse who pokes his head over the hedge, won't you? Yeah. Or maybe you don't do that already, do you? If you walked along the country road and saw a, he a horse with his head poked over the hedge, would you stroke it? No, I don't what? like horses. You see, that's because you're out of touch with your native land. See, if you spent less time on computers, you'd know that a horse is a friendly thing, and they only bite you sometimes. It never bit me. It threw me off. You were on a horse, were you? Yeah. It threw you off. Yeah. If you hadn't been wearing a helmet, you could have damaged yourself. So what do you see yourself doing now? What school do you go to? Cabin Hill. That sounds good. And what are you, you going to go on to university or something like that? Yeah, hopefully. And what would you like to study? Would you like to be a lawyer, an accountant, something like that, or do you want to be an IT specialist? I'd rather be a lawyer. I want to be a dentist. You want to be a dentist? Yep. Well, so you like inflicting pain upon people. That's basically what you're trying to say here. A dentist for dentists. A dentist's dentist? Yeah. You'd like to be the fellow who takes the dentist's teeth out? Pain in them, they pain in us. You do right. I like the way you're thinking here. So is there anyone in your family in the dentistry profession at all? No. Nope. You're the only one? Yes. So you'd like to be a dentist. Lots of money in that, you know, apparently. That's what they say. And apparently dentists drink a lot as well. I hate to bring, keep bringing drink into the conversation, but you seem to be choosing all the <laughs> occupations that are most prone to that. Well, I, 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 I hope that you, uh, I hope you're successful. And you sound like a very bright young lad to me. Uh, anything in the, uh, coming up at Christmas that you would particularly like to get, or uh, is that all 
cupboard for. Do you know what you're getting for Christmas? Uh, probably. I hope they get Pokemon for the Game Boy. Uh, for the Game Boy? Yeah. All right, then. Okay. So, do you think your parents will have any trouble getting it? I don't know. They might. Well, they know, they know the phone number now, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Same day delivery. No, next day delivery. Well, you've been very helpful to us because we've had people looking for Pokemon. And indeed, uh, sorry, what do you think of a person who doesn't know what Pokemon is? That's a person who doesn't really know what's going on in the world yeah. today, isn't it? That's a person who would really need to put their gun to their head, wouldn't they, really, and forget all about it. Yeah. Well, okay, then. Uh, I want you to think of me the next time you log in. I, I haven't told you where to get who wants to be a millionaire. That's only where to get Pokemon. Oh, I thought it was the two of them. So Pokemon can only be got on Toy Zone and Wizard and those two numbers? Yep. But where would you get who wants to be a millionaire? Yesterday, I was up at Toys R Us, and they had uh, loads of copies in, you know, up at Newton Abbey. Toys R Us, Newton, Newton Abbey. Abbey. Loads of copies of who wants to be a millionaire, the game. Yes. Well, you've been very, very helpful, sir. Can I ask you this? Uh, are you a regular listener to this program, or did you just stumble upon us? No, I listen to you now and again. Well, I'm pretty pleased that uh, young surfers are listening. And uh, I have to say to you, I, w I only wish that I could, I only wish that I could give you some small token of token of my esteem. But everything's were cleaned out here because of the rickety wheel and the greed that goes along with it. Maybe we'll be able to send you some small token of our appreciation, so that you, that you may enjoy your Christmas just a little more. And uh, do you want to say happy Christmas to anyone, to your long-suffering parents, or anyone like that? Yeah, the long-suffering parents. All right then. Christmas, Mom and Dad. Okay. Mr. Coyle is speaking in tongues here. He seems to think you need help. He doesn't need help. No. Apparently, uh, young Andrew is looking for some telephone numbers. You know. Andrew, are you looking for any telephone number yourself? No. I told you he doesn't need any why help. Why can't I hear you? Because you never listen, that's why. No, I, I, I can't hear you. You're, 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 I can just sort of see your wee lips moving. But well, I, can't, I, can't, I don't know why you can't hear me. Everybody else can hear me. We can't hear you. Well, well there's a call, to... apparently. Work with us here in this one. I know where we can't communicate. Work with us here. Apparently, Andrew needs help for a phone number. And there's a lady on three who can help. Me. He just doesn't try need it. help. Will you just try it, even though I can't hear you? This oh, is like right. the... All right, okay. All right, all right, all right. Andrew, I'm sorry. There's a woman, apparently, who thinks you need help. Tell you what we'll do. We'll put her on and see. You can be the judge of that, okay? Okay. Okay, hello. Good morning. Hello. Why do you think Andrew needs help? Well, I just think he's got a wee bit mixed up. As soon as he gave the phone number out there, I phoned him, toys him. Yes. And it's the wrong number. Uh, they said they've been inundated with calls. They're called with it. They're computer components. Really? So it's the wrong number? Uh-huh. And nope. did you hear that? It, it says it right here in the magazine. Wizard Interactive Sales Hotline Pokemon available. Official Pokemon merchandise also available. And it gives the number 01765. Six seven six six oh. Is that the number you rang, though? It is, uh-huh. And they are called wizard, but he says there must be some um, mistake because they're wizard, but it's computer components, and this has been inundated with calls the last 10 months. People look in them, um, he wants to be a millionaire. That's right, that's yeah. right. So I'm sorry, Andrew, obviously that's not your fault. Obviously, uh, uh, the number's given out, wasn't it? No, 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 no. I've got a strange little note here. It says the number's given out, wizard, nothing to do with he wants to be a millionaire give out email or HTML address. Well, we didn't say that. We didn't say it was anything to do with who wants to be a millionaire, did we? No, it was Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah. yeah. At the beginning of the um, conversation with Andrew, I thought it was Pokemon and, like yourself, I thought it was who wants to be a millionaire as well. Yes. So I phoned thinking it was um, a case to get who wants to be a millionaire. Oh, that's okay. That's probably and, my fault. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter anyway because they don't do Pokemon either. All right. Well, I'm sure Andrew wasn't to know that. That's There's correct. obviously... The only reason I phone it is those other people know not to... Okay. Well, if, if you try the other number... 0845 608 Uh-huh. Right enough. 0845 608 Obviously, Andrew, when you spotted this in the... Uh, magazine you took it in good faith but obviously there's been some mistake there which is not your fault yeah, it because they've been exactly that's all right all right <laughs> okay. love. thank you very much bye 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 there we are andrew so we can get who wants to be a millionaire you saw them person seen them personally with your own yeah. eyes and toys are us and you'd now be never mind toys or a wizard at all okay yeah.
And if you want Pokemon, try 0845 And as far as you're aware, that is probably the right number. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. I think you, you may make you one of our correspondents. Do you know what that entails? It entails being alert at all times. And any time anyone needs any help, you must be prepared to drop whatever you're doing and ring this program and help me, the presenter, to bring joy and happiness and a sense of good cheer to all the listeners in this program. Are you prepared to do that? Yep. Okay, then. Stay at your post. Do not leave your computer until you hear from the BBC. Okay? Okay. God bless you, my son. God Bye. bless you. Goodbye. Bye. See, this is the type of person... Can you hear me? See, I, What's wrong with you in there? Because there's some breakdown in here, and there's a man coming in now to fix it. Ken's here now. Is he? And 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 I can't hear you, but you can hear me. Well, there's things wrong in here, too, but I'm not crying about it. Lips moving. Okay. Can... All right, then. All right. Just... Hello. Good morning. Hello? Yes, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Yes? How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, glad to hear. Listen, I've got a little complaint to make. Yes. I sent in uh, a check to you some weeks back for children in need. Yes. For for John Wayne to be taped. Yes. Do you remember? I do. Yes. Yes. Then you put it over the air. You couldn't remember whether you had taped it or whether you had to tape it. Yes. I haven't received it yet. Oh, so I didn't tape it. No, you didn't tape it. I've been on to Geraldine. I've been on to the office two or three times. Once last week and. Uh, they said they uh, would deal with it. And, and they didn't. And I haven't received anything. And I wanted it for Christmas, you see. So oh, dear, did. dear. Oh, well, uh, let me let me remedy that immediately. Okay. I'll, I'll do that for you today, and I'll pop it off for you today. Right. Now, you'll need an address, won't you? I don't think anyone's don't, taking don't give, the address. Don't, don't give me your address over the air. No. As no. soon as we finish our little conversation here, give it to somebody inside. Right. And as soon as this program's over, I promise you, I'll, uh, I'll record that for you and send it to you. Okay, Jerry. Because we are overwhelmed here. I know you are. And I... because we're overwhelmed, I feel as if it's only my duty to do the best I can for you. Well, I'm sure you will. I will. I'm and sure I hope this will. is the last time you've caused to ring us up. Uh, as long as you stay off the wobbly water, we'll be all right. I'll stay off the wobbly water, don't you worry. Good man. Thank you. Good man. Have a happy Christmas. Thank you. Happy okay. Christmas to you, yes. Jerry, thanks very much. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. See how easy it is to do your Sorry? presence well. Sorry? Can you hear me now? Yes, because I, I've just been told the man who came in to fix things said that you turned our headphones down. I saw I did, yes. I realised that when he came in. Geordie yeah. wants you in too. So it was my fault no, that you couldn't hear me at all. Will you ask Geordie, a gentleman phoned from Lisburn, mm -hmm. and he's looking a free-range chicken. Yes. Can Geordie help? Well, I don't know about that. Well, will you ask him? Yeah. Okay. He's on too. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, right. Hello. Hello, Geordie. Hello, Jerry. Good morning, sir. Well, you had a rough old week of it by all signs. It wasn't easy for me, yeah. Uh, no. And I'm still not back to 100% full no, firing power I yet. I heard a pretty roughly on and half, and you just weren't. No, I wasn't myself. No. I know, uh, not but, myself at all. I'm coming round just no, very know, gradually. If they give it now, it'll take time. There's a weakness in me. So I was very. Really, Jerry Leaf is like a thief, so one man's up the next year, then. I was very low, you know. Nobody seems to realize that. Geordie, there's a number of things I want to talk to you about. Um, you'll be pleased to know that the woman who won your ferret is a Mrs. White. That's me. Oh, um, yes, she was on the phone, Jerry. Was she? Oh, yes, she's coming up today. She, she so Today? Oh, yes, yes. She sounds very nice. Yes, sounds very nice. Now, can I ask you this? Do you think... Uh, she gave me the impression that she thinks she won the ferret and the two ducks. Did oh, she... no. She, uh, I, that's no, just... sir, you said you couldn't, I says, no, Jerry, you couldn't, the person wins, the ferret couldn't win the two ducks, mate. Okay, that's okay, as long as well, I... Well, you the man, the wee man from away from uh, Five Mile Town, he was down on Sunday. Exactly. When this woman, and they got their two ducks on Sunday. And the, you gave them to, the, you, gave, you gave them the ducks? Oh, yes. And oh, they, were yes. they were live? Oh, yes. And uh, very happy with them and pleased, no. And what are they going to do? Are they going to keep them? Oh, yes, keep them for running the boat for the for few hands themselves. And they have a bit of space there? Oh, yes, they have. Well, all's, ended, all's well that ends well. Oh, yes, I've kept my end of the bargain. Oh, that's okay. I never I never doubted that you would. Now, uh, when you looked at those people in the eye, you realized right away that they were okay. Oh, yes, genuine people. I hope you feel the I hope you feel the same way about Mrs. White because I think I really do because I know by her voice and the way she was talking she was going to buy a wee collar and a leading all for it and take it for walks, you know. Is that right? Oh yes. 
I think the ferret would enjoy that. Oh, well, well this one would now, for as I say, he's a, he's a pet. Like, he's too good for going down the bars, spouting rabbits, you know. Yeah. He's not like his man and you know. Exactly. They're the post cats, you see, and he's a throwback, you know, to the greyhound, the white greyhound fur. That's right, so his mother and father would have been very happy to go down the burrow and sort out a few rabbits. Would he? His mother and father would have been happy to do that. Oh, yes. But whereas he himself is not all that happy, indeed, at the prospect of being pushed down a burrow. No, that's right. He's he's, he's too gentle, you know, he's a... Mm-hmm. Well, so you think that uh, Mrs. White will be a kind of a person that would... Uh, well, now, to the conversation we had now on the phone, now, she seems a very nice person, and she's can't wait to get them, and... Okay. Well, I hope she doesn't mind if we follow her progress. Because oh, no, I wouldn't think so. Because it's not every day the BBC gives out a white albino ferret to a stranger. And I think it's important that we monitor the progress and just to show the people that a ferret can be just as good a pet as a small dog or cat or whatever well, you want. up to... in England, Jerry, dear, the whole go. I know the very first time I saw one, a ferret on a lead, was in, uh, was in Tampa in Florida in okay, ni- yeah. 1993. Yeah. I, I was walking along the beach, you know, as you do, uh, looking at the women. And I saw a man coming along with a white animal on a, on a, on a lead. And it was a very kind of low-slung animal. Yes, and the wee hump on his back and man was skipping along, lovely and jumpy, you know. It was, and I, I, I had no uh, compunction other than to go over to him. And I said, excuse me, sir, um, what is that? And he said, it's a ferret. Yes. And I went, how unusual. And he said, not really. He said, they make wonderful pets. And I said, we never worried about jumping down your trousers. And he said, no, that's not the thing that I would worry about too much. So he was happy enough. So if he's happy, this is why he'll be happy. Oh, so I'll be very happy. And it's not the sort of thing that runs up your leg. No, 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 no. no. Just like the wee stroke on a cuddle. And... They do. Like, I'm kind of like that myself. <laughs> you know, when you think about it. Well, things have turned out well because, after all, Jody, you know, we could have got the other kind. You know what I mean? Oh, I know, but... We, we've been lucky. Oh, last thirty years, I mean. Well, you had the alternative of giving the last couple your two ducks or your Coca-Cola umbrella. Did they show any interest in the Coca-Cola umbrella no. at all? No, no. You didn't have to mention that at all. No, it I never bought. I didn't. That's okay. That's the way things it's, should it's, be. It's, it's still here. That's okay. It's still here. And all right. See, it was both up on his own. You say too. I know. You mustn't have put that on. Uh, <clears throat> I. Sorry, there's a man trying to interrupt us. What? No, I'm sorry for interrupting you and Geordie. Geordie, I hope you don't mind. Uh, there's a gentleman who he, he has to go out now, but he wants to play his balalaika for you and Geordie. Would you take him on too? No, he, not he, just he has, yet. He has to go no, out at half just, past the left. Would Geordie mind? Yet. Would Geordie mind? Not just yet. Not just yet. You asked Geordie about the free-range chicken. Not yet. I have other things to ask Geordie as well about but, the free-range chicken. Could you not let the man play the balalaika and then let him go? Geordie, will you stay there a moment and we get a man to play yes, Jerry, the, I'm in no hurry. the balalaika? Yes, Where is he, he then? Yes, he's on let that, let, that, let that wee man play now when he's good enough, like, let yes. him play it. Now. Okay, well, Geordie's on two. How do you expect the balalaika man to be on two well, as well? Well, he must be on one then. Well, why didn't you say one? Well, I'm sorry. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jerry. I believe you have a balalaika well, to play. Pardon? I'm sorry, we, that's not the type of language you want to Good morning in Russian. Oh, that's okay. Listen, are you, you're not Russian at all, No, no, no. But why do you have an interest in the, the, the musical instruments of that fair land? Well, I was over there, Johnny. I was over in Moscow two years ago in Petersburg. Oh, yeah. And I was uh, uh, on the banks of the Nava there, facing Peter's Fort. There's a man called Vladimir, wee old man. Vladimir? Vladimir. And he, play, he would play the fellow like all day for a dollar. I know people like that in uh, Donegal. Well, right. I'll give you a sound of the balalaika for that moment. Love right? to hear it, yes. Right, you ready? Yes. That's a record. That's a balalaika. That's, that's, that's a tape. You're bluffing. What? That's a tape. Um, I, I, I didn't say I was playing the balalaika. I was Sean said that. You implied it. No, I didn't imply it. You implied that you're going to play the balalaika and then I caught you. I'm not like you, John. I'm not operating on a false pretender. Well, what is that recording you've got there? It's a balalaika. That's that's a BBC recording of Get By in Russian, learning Russian. <laughs> right? Yeah. What are you laughing at? I'm not laughing at anything. Well, that's what it is. I understand, yeah. You can't, you can't really get that. Uh, you got lingual phone in Russian, but BBC do a good tape on it. Yeah, but that's very good, you know? very good, yes. yes. But I was standing there with that woman. Uh, 
there's a, a company down in Dublin called Group Educational Tours. Yes. And they operate out of Shannon Airport. Right? Yes. And you can actually go to Russia. It's not like the old days we enter us with the gates following you everywhere, you know? You can mm-hmm. do what you want out there when you get there. Yes. You know what I mean? No KGB or nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, they're GET Dublin, and the telephone number is 003531. Yes. 671. Yes. 3422. Got that. That's Dublin. That's group educational tours. Yep. And they'll bring you to Russia and teach you how to play the balalaika, will they? Everything. You name it, man. Well, maybe the woman would be interested in that. Well, what I'm saying is, they, they, they have people going out all the time, and they're, they're couriers down there. They bring back music all the time. You know, balalaika music. The real McCoy. Yes, okay. So, well, I mean, if a woman rings that up, there'd be no problem. If there's a small fee, they would sign it up there. Well, that's that and, sort of and that. And that would be right, right from the source, if you know what I mean. That sounds okay. Yeah. Thank you, want, you. you want to go out there yourself, by the way? No, I don't. No, I don't. I've never had any interest in cold countries. Dear me, there's, there's the hermitage with all the art, the object, the art, the Fabergé eggs in the Kremlin, you can see it all. I can see all that in the Alhambra and Granada. I can say the same thing, man. No, I don't li- I'm not interested in anything in cold countries. No, cold countries have nothing. Very, very warm in the summertime, you know. I know, but well, maybe I'll go there then. Well, that's, that's no, right. I, no, I'm not interested in anything that's above here. You mean to say you wouldn't take your wife out and buy a nice fur coat and take her out for a, tr- and a troika? No, thanks. And I used no, to... And Dr. Shivago with her, nice and romantic. I used to have contact with Russians, you know, because when I was a shipping clerk here in Derry Stoke, London, Derry yep. Airport, Russian boats used to come in here. I left the Halley, I know that. No, they used to come up a bit further than that. Is that right? Yes, some of them cargo ships, the grain ships, used to come up to the very heart of the city. They're decent people, Jerry. They are, because I used to have to go down there maybe very early in the morning. We used to dock about six or seven, and you had to go on the boat. And, uh, you know, to, to make sure that all the papers were okay, yep. customs people. And I used to have to be there at that time. And they used to break out the vodka. Oh, brilliant. And they used to have these little tiny glasses, and they'd pour you a glass, and they'd give it to you, and then you'd fire it down your neck. And then they'd smash it up against the bulkhead. Very strong stuff, too. I used to be going back to the office at nine o'clock, full as a pole. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> and I used to never sober up until lunchtime. Then I had to go to home and go to home to bed. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Thank you very much, sir. Well, no problem, John. And by the way, you see if it happened to me for the Russians? Yes. During the war? Yes. There'd be a swastika flag of storm out. I know. People don't appreciate that. 26 million dead on the rest. That's right, they stopped Hitler in his tracks. Uh, and uh, don't forget who gave Hitler the money to go into Russia in the first place. Who, w- West, Western capitalism. I know, yeah, that's He was true. only a puppet. A Frankenstein monster could, call, could run rat in, in Europe. I can see there are other sides to your personality here. Well, uh, the Russian people are not, are not... During the war, they were appreciated for no. their effort. No, that's true. But then, then the propaganda took over and they were, they were vilified, you know? Yeah, that's true. But well, you can't blame Stalinism like the Russian people. Oh, I haven't blamed Stalin for a very long time. Uncle Joe. Okay, thank All the you. Best. Thank you, Bye, bye. Is it funny how quickly you get into a discussion on Stalinism in this program yeah. when you're talking about the balalaika? Charlie, sorry for keeping you there. You still there? Where is he? Well, it's still it should be. Well, Heather's on free. Where is he? Where's Jordy? Well, I he took him away, didn't, didn't you? didn't take Jordy away. He took him away. Jordy's still on free. Jordy, you still there? Hello, still Jordy. Here, Jerry, yeah. I'm sorry, Jordy. I'm blaming Mr. Coyle. Listen, I want to ask you about something. I was very ill last week. And uh, I had occasion to go to the doctor. And uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but he told me that I may not have had ordinary flu. He said what I may have had was Aylesbury-Drake syndrome. Well, that's no word guy really for stress. You know, I mean... He said it's a very rare foul pesticidal disease that yeah. uh, occurs, he said, sometimes fatal to drakes, but the human being can survive it. Apparently it starts with a small inflammation of the coccyx, then it yeah. spreads through the blood. Cockagosis. Yeah. Cockagosis, yes, that's supposed to be. is supposed to be, yes, it's a virus, it is. Well, he said there was a very good chance I could have got that because of my pigeon chest. Well, not as right. Not as so, the doctor. I'm just trying to say, really, that uh, I'm not blaming you in any way, but we were quite jocular, and maybe we didn't treat your Drake's death with the respect. That well, that's not what I. That's not what I, I told. That's not what I told you. I know. There were too many. I'm sure, then the pair come up and wanted the bad just to so they could say that the one of them, that that was on the regular, but they got it. They wanted the dead Drake. No, they were looking the bad living. Yeah. They come up that week. I know. 
But we, uh, I think we showed a little, a little disrespect, and uh, I apologize for that. But I think God has got his own back on me for that. Well, he uh, struck, struck me down with a pile. Of I was pile just of listening to all the complaints there. I was one and one, uh, you know, one. Uh, but I'm sure them people now that one, them people that come here was happy enough. Yes, and I think that woman, Mrs. White, when she comes up to your house, is she She's coming not up? Happy enough. Is she coming and, up today? Is she? Yes. Well, I think she'll be happy enough. And the ones that got their weekends and all, oh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you were that one on the record anyway. That's right. I'm sure that was only for the price of a stamp. Exactly. Not so, even. So why some, are they all? In some cases, not even the price of a stamp. Yes. Well, now why are they all up again the uh, record anyway? I'll and... tell you why. I'll tell you why, Jordy. Because many people expect something for nothing. What's wrong? What they get them something for nothing? No, I blame Hugo. It's Hugo's fault. He started it all. He's given them the impression that they deserve things for nothing. Yes, I see. I see your point now, yes. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Jordy, there's another woman looking for you here. Just let me just check. And sure she's... Isabel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Isabel, you're through to Jordy. Sorry? You're through to Jordy. Right, thank you. Just ask him whatever you like. I see. It's you, Jerry, I want to talk to. Oh, it's me. I'm sorry. I want to talk to. Who does you want to talk to? The lady wants to ask a question about ferrets. Who better to ask than Jordy? You want to ask a question about ferrets? I want to speak to Jerry. Okay. To me? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Jerry, it's about ferrets. Yes. And I think you should warn this lady who is getting the ferret and anybody else who owns ferrets to be very careful of the mobile phone because ferrets have a passion for mobile phones. But you have a ferret ring. Well, now, that's a good question, because my daughter has a ferret, and he stole my mobile phone, and he's hidden it, and we've never been able to find him. Is that right? And I was reading an article in a magazine recently, and this woman has found six telephones under her bed. She took in lodgers, and her ferret has stolen all the mobiles. Is that a fact? Jordy, what do you think of that? Well, Jerry, I would say that's a, a hub she has. It's a hub bird. A hob ferret. Oh. Uh, do you have a hob ferret? I'm sorry? Is that a hob ferret you have? I don't really know what kind of ferret it is. What, what's a, what's a hob ferret, Jordy? Uh, it's, it's the female. It's the mobile uh, telephone ferret. The, 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 the hob ferret is the male and the jilt is the female. The jilt? Uh, and the wee jilt is a female and the hob is a male ferret. Uh-huh. Which is the one you have? It's my daughter, actually, has it, and I don't know what breed he is, but he's absolutely lovely. But well, does it wear a little skirt or anything? <laughs> no, but she also has a lead and um, a harness for him. Yes. And did you, have, you only had, have you had any trouble with your ferret at all? My daughter's ferret? Yeah, your daughter's ferret? I, no, I, I, he, apart from stealing my phone, my yeah. mobile phone, no. So you, would you know. recommend them as pets, then? I can't tell you, I'm sorry. Would you, would you recommend them as pets? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's good. They are such fun to watch. Well, that's good, yeah. Hear that, Jordy. But they well, are... See, Jerry, I know that. that. Yeah. Jerry, I know that. You know that, but see, people out there would be a little apprehensive. You know, possibly not knowing the ferret as we know it. Oh, that's right, that's right. All right, then. But I would say that lady, you know, that's a hub ferret, and that's why he steals them mobile bones. They don't steal money here, for there's no one here. No, I would imagine, no. But... Uh, <laughs> I would say away, it is really, it clicked it into the wee corner and it, it sort of, you know, it gets up to maybe wee dittery do's on, you know. Dittery do's on it? Ah, uh, you know what I mean, like it rolls over it and... Oh, I think I would say it's a wee, wee oh, wheel part. Oh, like the, um, like the tortoise and yes, the heads. Yes, yes. Yeah, all right, I see yes. what you mean. Say no more, wink, wink, nod, nudge, nudge. Yes. All right, then. I would think. So turn away from your ferret. All right. I hate your mobile phone. Hide your mobile phone. Well, thank you very much, love. Thank you for that. Uh... Just tell them to be careful with the telephone. All right, then. Okay. Dear, dear. Thank you. Bye. 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 So yours isn't a hob ferret. Uh, no. Geordie, no. So there's no need to worry about it. Oh, yes, mine is a hob. Oh, yours is a hob. Oh, yes. So we, uh, we'll warn the woman to be careful about her mobile phone. Yes, that's, that's right. That's fair enough. Okay. That's right. And, uh, um, um, a, a, a gentleman wants to know where... What's that about a free-range chicken, eh? What's that about a free-range chicken? He wants to know where would he get a free-range chicken. Where and, does he live? What part of the Lisburn part? area? And there's a man in Belfast wants Geordie uh, to help can find a nail plant. Where would he get a nail plant? 
stop the old ale plant yeah, thing I know, again. I know, I know. You know how much I hate I ale plants. I don't like them. Every either. once in a while, someone... Go on, and how do you make them? And he's on about well, ale plants. Well, this is Billy. Billy wants No, no, tell Billy to wise up. No, ask Jordy. No, I'm fed up with ale plants. Yeah, right. sure, Major. Right, right, right. 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 no ale plants, that's right. it. No, no, no ale free plants. range. That's it. Free what? range chickens and Karen's and free. Okay, where would a man get a free range chicken, Jordy? Well, it all depends what he's looking for. I'll give him a free range hen if he wants. But what all the men and land hen, what's he looking for? I would imagine possibly for a few eggs, possibly. Ah, ah, what's that man he's looking for Christmas? He what? He wants to eat it. He wants to eat it? Oh, no. Christmas. Oh, tell him to. Christmas. Tell him he's barking up the wrong tree. Yes. Okay. Uh, he wants to eat what? Oh, excuse me. The hen that you... Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, I missing the whole point of this program completely. Are we talking about eating ferrets? Are we talking about eating things? No. We're talking about animals as human beings. Okay. He can, oh, I'm sorry. He can fly off and whistle up his own trousers. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get no free-range chicken here to eat. Right, Jordy? You are quite right, sir. Absolutely. If he wants a no, chicken... No, no, I would give him one of you looking now for land, like... You see, you'd need to be careful. I mean, there's not everyone you'd lend a chicken Hello, to. Hello, Jerry, you wee lady. You mind the wee lady phoned about a wee apple yard duck? Yes, I she remember phoned her. you. Yes. From uh, Newtown Arts. That's right, Jerry. Well, she come up and she got a wee ale for and she's very happy with it. We, uh, uh, apricorn called up. And you've lent it to her just, have Oh, you? no. No, she, she bought one off me. Did she really? Oh, yes. I and, think you told me about that before. I'm very pleased with it. Excellent. Okay. So we called up. Well, I hope the lady will be uh, pleased with her ferret today. And there's a wee cup now before it could be early enough for the frost has come. We knew the slows. Knew yes. the slows, Jack. Yes, yes. The bruise on the blackthorn bushes. Yes. What Hello? about them? Hello? Yes? It's okay. We can hear you okay. What about them? Well, uh, barely enough, you know, for this 3,000 thing. Mm-hmm. So you go out and pick it like, you know, a later bottle. You know, the big later bottle, you'll find them laying anywhere at, well, you know, with tubs will throw them out. Yes. And you go out and pick that bit. See, the frost would split, the, the split now, you know, the frost. Yes. The slow. Yes. And you fill that about three quarter full. Yes. Of slow. Yes. On about, then just tap it up with gin. Gin, yes. And two spoonfuls of brown sugar. And a wee shake, I know that vanilla, you know, vanilla. tasty stuff, you know. Vanilla? Yes, you know the wee drops. Yes. Yes. Of them. yes. And put it in your hot press. You know your hot press. I know it, yes. And turn it every now and again. You know, give it a bit of a shake and turn it now and again. And you've got slow gin? Yes, and there'll be three weeks of the time enough for all this big kebab. You know, a whole lot cheaper than going out. I would say so. You know. And, and, and it's fairly potent, that, is it? Oh, yes, it's good stuff. Blow the head off you. No, it was nice, black. I know. How much gin would you put in it there? Not much. No, it doesn't take, like I always say, maybe just a quarter of a bottle would. Mm-hmm. You know, you see, you three quarters right up full of slows. Yes. You know. That would, that would taste nice, actually. Oh, it tastes lovely. Oh, what? It was right in your heart like a yard of alb, so it is. Does lovely. It? All right, then. Okay. Well, Jordy, uh, hold on a minute. You're in big demand, I'm telling you. Hello, Karen wants to speak to you. Hello, Karen. Hello, Jerry. You're through to Jordy. Good morning, George. Just to let you know that the wee duck settled in well. Oh, you're the lady with the wee duck. I am indeed. She's been called Holly. That's lovely. Has her husband called Norman? Jordy, can you hear that? I can indeed. Excellent. I'm sorry, but I told her the teddy it was happening already. You did indeed. There's only one wee problem with her, George. She took a wee fly out of the garden yesterday. I know, but that's only stationary. But she'll come back home. She don't, don't bother clipping her wings or anything. No, I wouldn't, boy. You know, give her that wee. But she'll always come back home. She'll come back to him. Actually. Right. Did she come back yesterday? Oh, she did. She fell into the garden. <laughs> well, yeah, she had no choice then. Just dropped into it. Uh-huh, she did. Well, you're happy enough then with your wee duck. I'm tickled with her, Jerry. Thank oh, you very much. brilliant. She's a lovely wee thing. You know, there'll come a time in, in the near future of this program when every true and honest listener will own a duck. Yes. <laughs> and that is my ambition for the millennium. They're very good for your blood pressure. You feel as if you, they calm you down? They do. Whenever you, whenever you feel things get on top of you? Just stand and watch them. I do nothing but hang over the kitchen sink and watch them. You know, this, I can see... Do, do you know, Jordy, do you know that in Radio Foil here, we are blessed that in one of the windows in the office in which I work, or the office in which I'm supposed to work, I look out the window and there are two ducks there and two rabbits. And well, an that's what kept you, you know... Exactly. ...going so long. 
Two ducks, two rabbits, yes. and an apple tree. Well, you're very lucky, you know. I know I am. There's many people looking out across an industrial tundra of waste. Yes. And I can see life tough and red in tooth and claw. And the wee, the wee lady is on the phone there. She's seeing Stanley the Turkey, and she's looking at... Oh, he is lovely. You saw Stanley, did you? Stanley and his wife, yes. Well, excellent. I've never seen... You've seen things I haven't seen. Oh, Stanley is fabulous. He is very, I, very large stag turkey. I hear great reports about Stanley. Uh, he, he, he reminds me of me in many ways. He, he and his wife live on the roof. Do they? <laughs> Do. Yeah. Okay, then, well, best of luck with your duck. Thank you very much indeed. Happy Thank Christmas you. to you both. Happy Christmas. Bye-bye. Woo! 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 Well, then, building a gallows outside my cell. I've got 25 minutes to go. And the whole town's waiting just to hear me yell. I got 24 minutes to go. Well, they gave me some beans for my last meal. I got 23 minutes to go. But nobody asked me how I feel. I got 22 minutes to go. Well, I sent for the governor and the whole darn bunch with 21 minutes to go. And I sent for the mayor, but he's out to lunch. I got 20 more minutes to go. Then the sheriff said, boy, I'm going to watch you die. Got 19 minutes to go. So I laughed in his face and I spit in his eye. Got 18 minutes to go. Now here comes the preacher for to save my soul with 13 minutes to go. And he's talking about burning, but I'm so cold. I got 12 more minutes to go. Now they're testing the trap and the chills my spine with 11 more minutes to go. And the trap and the rope, oh, they work just fine. Got 10 more minutes to go. Well, I'm waiting for the pardon that'll set me free with nine more minutes to go. But this is for real, so forget about me. Got eight more minutes to go. With my feet on a trap and my head in the noose, got five more minutes to go. Won't somebody come and cut me loose? Got four more minutes to go. I can see the mountains, I can see the sky. Three more minutes to go. And it's too darn pretty for a man to want to die. I got two more minutes to go. I can see the buzzards, I can hear the crows. One more minute to go. And now I'm swinging and here I go. That's Johnny Cash. So it is, as they say. I have to apologize for the pandemonium that reigned there. Something went horribly wrong with this desk. It sounded like a, a fire siren, but I don't know what it was. It went all horrible. Hello, Jordy. Hello, Jack. Sorry about that. Didn't even get a chance oh, to say right. it. Thank you. No, uh, just a wee quick word I wanted to say to you. Yes. About them tapes you were, now you were so supposed to have them. Which tapes were those? Uh, somebody gave in tapes and you said, oh, well, I give a tape away and then you said to Sean, you know, with San Jordi, a lack of tapes or something. What tapes were those? I can't remember what uh, they well, were. Well, somebody gave a 12 tapes or something and you were, if there wasn't much praise, that you give away a tape or something along with. Well, we have, uh... We have all kinds of stuff. I'll send you selection of stuff. Do you do you have a video by any chance? Do no, no. Video? Or do you have a CD player at all? 
Or do, do you just use the cassette tapes? Oh, just the tapes, yeah. That's okay, okay. We'll send you down something. And don't forget your wee photograph for the fly back, you know. <laughs> And Barn Bridge, that's a long time of coming. Okay, right. We've got three questions, I think, for you, Jordy. Yeah? Hold on, what? what? Brian wants to know where will he get a Muller yeah. Drake? A Muller Drake? A wild Muller Drake. Yes, I can fix him up with a wild Muller Drake. There you are. Right. What do you, what do you call a young donkey? He was asked before to settle an argument. And where would the people get the slows that he talked about? And the black, the black thorn bushes. Yeah. Sure, they wouldn't be out now, would they? they oh, yes, the is the time, you see. Them. The frost has split them now, oh, and then sick. that's why the juice comes out so right. quick, you know. And the young donkey, what's it called? What a young call? donkey now, that's a, a young donkey, that's a good one now. Um, that, uh, is, uh, that is a good one now. I don't know what a young I donkey I should have known, I should know. No, no, he's putting you on the spot here. No, but what was he now, a young donkey? Well, you can't is it, is it a mook? Jobby, Jordy. No, it's a mini mook. That's is a, a mook. Wait, this before, I think it's a mook. Sam, I heard you today. I think you're that. right now. I think if I was an argument, the one talk about right. a mule right. and, and the mook, and I think you're right, Sean, right. as the mook. A mook? A mook? Yes. I don't know how it's spelled. That's the yes. origin of the phrase, running a mook. A whole lot gets mixed up with a mook and the mule. You see, a mule A mule is, you breed a mare, a, a mare pony with a Jack Duncan, and then yeah. you have the mule. Yes. Yes. You know. I can see where you're coming from, yes. All right, Jordy. Listen, now, we'll send you something down then, of course, for Christmas. Uh, and you, that cook on Morale didn't Jordy. go. You mustn't have put it up. The what? No, the big on Morale. Uh, no, 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 no. The uh, the alternative was that you give away two ducks or the Coca-Cola umbrella. That's the way that worked. Oh, was that it? We don't want to clean you out completely. <laughs> No, you keep the Coca-Cola umbrella. We'll send you something off for That's Christmas. okay. All, uh, just okay. happy Christmas to the whole lot of you. Thank you very much, and I hope uh, you get sorted out with the ferret. Oh, yes, and Nanny sings a tall show at GOE Dingle. Thank you very much. All the best, Jerry, now. Bye. Happy Christmas, now. Happy Christmas. God bless, boy. Thank you. Bye. That's Jordy. who's going to give us a dingle. Uh, distressed Cookstown mother is looking for a doll called Baby All Gone. She will travel to purchase it. Anyone out there who knows whether they get themselves a baby called, sorry, a doll called Baby All Gone? I'd love to say hello to William of Newton Arts. Please play Silent Night 1915 by Jerry Lynch. Lots of requests to play that, and equally large number of requests not to play. A SWAT rock caller looking for a book called No Mate for the Magpie by Frances Malloy. Where would she buy it? I don't see any problem in I think I've seen that knocking about, although it's not the sort of thing I'd read, to be honest with you. But I've seen that knocking about, to be honest with you. I said, to be honest with you twice, it must have been in Lang. A one-year-old black Labrador dog is missing from Lower Antrim Road last Thursday. It's a child's pet. The owner is very upset. So especially around Christmas, anyone sees a one-year-old black Labrador dog around the Lower Antrim Road area last Thursday. Give us a ring here. Also lost, a liver white Springer Spaniel bitch and a black Labrador dog missing from the Drummond S area of Ballinahinch yesterday. Uh, we've got a contact number here. Give us a ring here if you see either of those. A liver stroke white Springer Spaniel bitch and a black Labrador dog. I don't know if they disappear together or what. The Liverpool branch of the Ballymena Supporters Club and Trevor Kyle. Uh, congratulations and hello to them. Merry Christmas to them from Michael Davin and Clan. Wanted. Anyone out there in the Enniskillen area? Anyone out there got a golden retriever pup? Obviously, uh, it's going to be an idea for somebody's Christmas present. So... I have to tell you again, though, if you're, if you're buying a pet for Christmas, make sure you know what you're doing, because, after all, a dog is not only for Christmas. If you're going to give a child a pup, make sure it's going to look after it, or failing the child looking after it, you're prepared to look after it yourself. After all, that's what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> hello? Yes, hello? Good morning, hello? Hi, Terry. Yes, who's that? Uh, it's Tony. Tony, yes, Tony. I've got a... A record, a fellow like a record for that lady that was on this morning. Have you? Yeah. It's called Sounds Balalega. It's by the London Balalega Ensemble. Well. And it's a dagger record. Yes. And there's a, a very 1960s looking girl on the front. Yeah. She, I think she's supposed to be a Russian peasant. Yeah. She's holding a balalega, mm -hmm. but she's wearing a watch. So yeah. it's sort of, and she looks terrified. Looks like one of those Woolworths things. That's, those... that's exactly what it is. Yeah, exactly what it is. Top of the pops. Yeah. There's it's a date on it in 1968. That's the one, yeah. But it's, um, this is her sod eye. Um, I bought this after, remember the film The Deer Hunter? Yeah. Right, there was some <laughs> ball of music in that. Yeah. 
and I was tapping my toe late in the cinema, and I was in town one day, and I saw this record and I bought it. But it's so old, I think it's probably deleted. But uh-huh. if the lady wants, um, if she wants to contact me, I'll give her the record or do her a tape or something, and she can buy her sister something else. Well, all right, then that seems like a reasonable offer. We'll uh, we'll give you her number. <clears throat> well, you, you can do that, or Sean has my number, whatever you like. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. All right, then. Jerry, 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 do you want to hear the name of some of the tracks on it? Yeah. Where do you hear this? There's a track on it called Oh You, My Snowball Tree. Lovely. And there's one called There Is More Than One Path Across the Field. Excellent. So, Donald Loney couldn't do any, any stuff like this, you know? No, especially with only that old bazooki he uh, has. You were chanting your arm this morning there, weren't you? Of course you? I was. Story uh, of my life. Caught out. I caught out is right. Okay. I don't mind being caught out. That's the difference. What? I don't mind being caught out. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> okay, then. All the best. Happy Christmas. You too. Right. Bye. Bye. Happy Christmas to everyone. Sis, I'm coming. I lost my coat in my down down. Four way to. Sis, I'm coming. I lost my coat in my down down. Mama, Sis, I'm coming. I lost my coat in my down down. Desri and Lady Smith Black Man Baz, who a song called Ain't No Sunshine. That's all we have time for. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. If you want to write to me, write to Jerry Anderson, care of BBC Radio 4, Jerry Stoke, London, Derry. Email jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>